Good morning and a warm welcome to St. John's today uh, as we gather. A warm welcome to everyone, uh, especially if you are new, if you are a visitor here at St. John's. It's a joy to have you here with us uh, today. Uh, it's great to be back after a little break uh, last week, after what was a glorious, glorious Easter. And I'm sure some of you still are holding on to your hearts the memories of our uh, fire pit service uh, at the vigil in the morning, the Holy Communion time, and of course, what a glorious baptism we had on that Sunday. If I didn't manage to get you splashed with water, don't worry, there'll be other baptisms, and I will, I will look at you, don't worry. Uh, friends, we gather with uh, fantastic excitement. There is so, so much happening. Uh, but also, I want to just uh, invite you all um, to join us in prayer as, as we enter this post-Easter phase. We also enter in with a lot of uh, missional activities coming soon. And you know that on the 12th of May, we are going to have our pirate party service. We have over 200 children booked in for uh, that uh, services, for those services. And would you join me in prayer, collectively as a church, that we'll see God working in touching hearts as a result of our, our work. And uh, of course, uh, in continuation to that, we'll be running a Alpha course, which will start on the 16th of May. And we, we are in faith putting the Alpha course together to see whether there'll be people responding to the voice of Jesus. And that will be really exciting, but pray for the Alpha course as well. And Steph and Adrian Head shall be uh, leading that, um, uh, that course this year. It will be really, really special. Tonight, we join in to uh, worship God. And the 11 o'clock worship team, the music team, will be leading the, um, the, ser the service tonight. It's, it's just a night of worship, music and prayer. And all of you are welcome to join us for, for that. You see the different activities happening in the life of the church, such as healing helpers, and of course our APCM uh, gathering will be happening Sunday, the 28th of April, 4 p.m. That will give us a chance to have a retrospective time over the last year, for those of you who haven't been to a church APCM before. So if you are able, come and join us, and let us rejoice on God's blessings upon our lives over the last year or so. It'll be a really, really special time, and it'll be lovely to be able to share the time together as one a big family in Christ. You'll see some information in the back as well uh, that uh, there is some, um, some plans in the Western Ward for a visit at the Iona community, which I think is, is really, really exciting. So if you want more information, there is a meeting coming on the 24th of April uh, it actually, it's a double meeting on the 24th, at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. And if you are interested in that, or interested to get to know more about the Iona community, please come to that meeting. I think I think something really special that we can do together as churches in, in our area. Uh, lastly, I just want to publish the bands of uh, marriage between Sean Gale and Lisa Marie Bradford. That's for the first time of asking from this parish. And from Benjamin Graham, Carlin, and from Lucy Jane Permain, from this parish, to me be married in this parish too. This is for the first time of asking, and for the second time of asking for Carlin and Permain. And if any of you know any reason law why these people should not be married, you must declare it now. Okay. 
one day I'll have a heart attack if someone actually says something. <laughs> Shall we pray for them? Jesus, we pray for Sean, for Lisa Marie, for Benjamin and Lucy. And Lord, we pray that with pain in their heart, would you cause your care to be the foundation of their marriage and love for one another. And may we be a channel of blessing as we leave this night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, hallelujah. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Once again, hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. As God's people, we declare, hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Let us all stand and sing Charles Wesley's wonderful words, Rejoice the Lord is King to Handel's tune, Doctors. <laughs> Standing. Let us say our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit or kneel for the prayers of cleansing. Christ died for sin once for all. 
and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. So we lift our hearts to heaven to receive God's forgiveness. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, help and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ. Amen. Let us stand to sing the Gloria in response to our absolution. in Christ you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father Amen All the reading is bright as far in darkness
sit for our reading. Which David will come and read to us from the Acts of the Apostles. This New Testament reading is from Acts 3, verses 12 to 19. In this reading, Peter has just healed the lame man, and he sees the people are astonished at what he has done. When Peter saw their astonishment, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. O Lord. The Gospel is taken from Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 48. Jesus appears to his disciples. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. So, Lord, may your word be open before us, and eternal may our hearts be open to it. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Friends, you need to imagine Portsmouth being an island that it is, be transformed into a place of uh, even greater beauty than it already is. If you imagine Portsmouth closer to the equator, with the weather a little bit more warm than it is. <laughs> oh, beside my hometown city, we had a, an, a little island, again linked by the, the land, by a bridge, just like Portsmouth is. But instead of a high population living there, it was a more like a holiday resort, if you like, where people would buy their second homes and go for, for holidays. And uh, we, we were able to swim with dolphins and manatees, and uh, it was a, a really, really beautiful place where I spent many, many summers of my childhood in there. And so as a nine-year-old, uh, walking with my sister and my cousin, uh, we were just passed by, and there was a farm nearby with some horses, and we didn't think twice. We spoke to the farmer and said, can we take the horses for a ride? It was 20-something years ago, or a bit more. And the farmer said, yeah, go for it. My sister and my cousin, who couldn't ride horses as well as I did, uh, took on the horses with the saddles. And me, full of bravado and confidence, took the horse without a saddle. We started riding uh, on by the sand, by the sea. It was just beautiful. And my sister and cousin said, let's go for a race. And I said, I had sense. I said, no, you go. I'll stay behind. That's fine. See, I'm a sensible man. Even at a young age, the horses went. My horse felt left out. And off it went galloping, catching up with those two horses. I did the only thing that a sensible young man could do. I held for my dear life around the horse's neck. If you know about horse riding, you know that that's not a good idea. Within a few gallops, I was tilted upside down, face to face with the horse. <laughs> I fell from uh, the horse onto the sand, thankfully, and could not avoid but be stepped upon the horse once. And the horse was kind enough not to do the second step, which would have gone upon my head. And I'm very grateful for dear horse for that. I had to walk back home because I would not go up on the horse again and come back home. And worse than being trampled upon the horse was to face my parents to say, have a look at this, this big, big scar, uh, to which we went straight into the hospital. And uh, the doctor said, you need to have an anti-tetanus jab. Now, friends, I have very few uh, phobias or fears in life, but I quite dislike injections. I can't explain, I can't quantify that. It just doesn't belong in me. But worse than have a fear of needles in my book is to have a fear at all. So as I was there, getting ready to have this injection, not looking forward to that at all, the nurse was saying, look to the other side. It would be better if you don't like needles. And I was like, you really don't understand reasoning with me, do you? This is something I don't like, and do you think I would trust you to inject me with something I don't like without looking at it? So I was there staring at this injection as it came upon me, and off it goes. There were three more rounds of it, which I equally did not enjoy. And friends, sometimes we are filled with fear in different uh, aspects of our lives such as the disciples, confused, not by being trampled upon a horse, but being trampled upon the circumstances of life as their teacher, as their leader, had been trampled upon the authorities and the rulers of this uh, world. They didn't understand it. They were terrified in fear. What now would be the question? And the report of a resurrection didn't seem to really capture their hearts. Didn't seem to really give them the confidence and faith that they would require. It didn't give them the assurance that all that Jesus had foretold was it in true. That didn't really, if you like, the penny had not yet dropped. And so the disciples hear from Jesus as he walks. And the first word, words that Jesus says to them, 
totally understandable. Peace be with you. Can you imagine the confusion and fear of the disciples as they are there talking about all that's happening, trying to make sense of it all, we're still scared. What are the authorities going to do? Are they, are, have they forgotten about us? Jesus speaks what they need to hear. Peace, peace be with you. They were still terrified. Is it a ghost? Once again, Jesus is confused with a ghost. They, he's probably getting a bit bored of that by now. But he goes and says, you are frightened. And why do you doubt in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. If you are scared of the authorities, if you are scared of everything else, but also if you are scared of this who you see in front of you resurrected, just touch. This time, don't just taste and see. Touch and see that the Lord's there before you. Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bone as you see that I have. And friends, I wonder sometimes what are our objections to faith. Sometimes what are the things that cause us to hold back in following Jesus? Jesus gives us everything we need. And addressing the fear of the disciples, he is giving us the answers to all those objections. I cannot possibly believe in a God who I cannot see. Look at Jesus. I cannot possibly believe that resurrection is, is real. Touch Jesus. I cannot believe that he's done it all for me and for you. Open your arms to Jesus. I wonder if sometimes we are like the disciples, feeling like our faith is far smaller than a grain of mustard seed feeling almost inadequate as Christians or even more inadequate to be called a Christian because we have so many doubts because we are just not sure about everything friends in God's hands something small can become something beautiful precious and a giant force that can move mountains if today you feel like the disciples and feel inadequate in your faith let Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, renew your faith, strengthen your faith. May you no longer look at others thinking they are giants of faith. Oh, wow, they, are, they know Jesus. May you become today a giant of faith. May you today embrace the calling of Jesus. May you share a meal with him. May you share life with him. But there, may, may, there might be some of us here today, maybe watching us online, or someone you know who God will be using you, who feel that they can't yet embrace Jesus because they haven't seen him, because there are still questions to be answered. That is all right. Even his disciples had questions to be answered. Jesus will walk with you. Jesus will show up as terrifying as that may be. And he will invite you to look, to observe. He'll be himself the evidence you need for faith to arise, for you to see Jesus. Rise up as a follower of Jesus. Stand up as a giant of faith, for it is God's calling for you. Let no more confusion be in your heart, for he says, peace be upon you. For Jesus loved the disciples, and he loves you too. And he shows, he shows them his hands and his feet, 
a spirit of a, or a ghost he is not of flesh and bones flesh and bones sit with them and eat isn't that wonderful on that sharing of fishy, fish and honeycomb the glorified body of Christ but his promises to us are there to be seen and at display the disciples must have been amazed and awestruck by what happened. At the sight of his, their Lord being with them. Those stories were true. He is indeed eating in our midst once again. And we know the symbolism of sharing meals for Jesus and the disciples. And he opens the scriptures. He explains about his suffering and the necessity of that. Remember, he had done it already. They just forgot it or didn't fully understand it. But he told them that now the job is to witness. The job is to take it forth. You are a witness of these things. To teach of repentance. To teach of forgiveness and to proclaim his, names to, his name to all nations. Friends, I live with that great motto that there is no greater thing than knowing Jesus as our Savior. I know I'm boring the words of Paul here. He got that before I did. Still, there is truth in that. So may we as a community engage and see the resurrected of Christ in this time. May we see him and the promises fulfilled in him. May we see the evidence that we need to walk closer in faith and embrace him and stand up as a follower, as a disciple of Christ. Beyond that, may we this season, this new Easter, may we stand up to say, today I'm no longer living in the shadows. Today you rise as a mighty servant of the Lord. Today he calls you to a new dimension of love and experience and knowledge of his calling for you. And as you rise, empowered by the Holy Spirit, may you feel empowered to share his love with those around you, as he tells us to do, to proclaim his name, forgiveness of sins. You know that I can't get to meet all of, of your friends, don't you? As much as a people's person that I may be, as much as every cup of coffee is welcomed, you know that I just wouldn't be able to see all people in Rocks Hill. But together, we can. Together, we can fully embrace the call of Jesus and bring the resurrect of Christ into the lives of those who don't yet know how wonderful it is to know Jesus. Brothers and sisters, May today we be empowered by the power of the resurrection and in turn take on the power of Jesus to our community. Let us pray. So Jesus, would you speak to us words of peace? Would you allow us to sit by your side, to see you glorified, and in turn, would you take our faith and make it bigger and greater so that by your name we can move mountains and new tongues can praise your name. All this in Christ we pray. Amen. Let us stand and declare our faith in Christ our Saviour. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, 
who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in all the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit or kneel for our intercessions, which will be led by Bob this morning. Let us pray to the Father, through the Son, who is close to us now and always. In this season of rejoicing in the new life won by the death and resurrection of our Saviour, we thank you, Lord, for the annual signs of new life all around us. May we never be too busy to take pleasure from the sight and the scent of flowers, the sound of birds, nest building nests and raising their chicks and all the wonders of nature which can ease our anxiety or depression and lift our thoughts above the mundane where we have been neglectful of our duty to, to care for our world please forgive us and help us to make amends lord in your mercy Hear us, Father, as we pray for our country, thinking especially of the royal family as they cope with the extra burdens and anxieties brought about by the illnesses of the King and the Princess of Wales. Grant to them and all families dealing with the fears engendered by a diagnosis of cancer or other serious illness, courage and patience while they undergo treatment and grant them speedy recovery. We pray especially for Robin and Maureen Webb, John Carborn, Kath Maycock, Maureen Smith, Rita Gray, Ian Elkins, Paul Mosley, Ken French, and Joe Peck. We lift to you all those who continue to need our prayers and support, whether mentioned by name here or known to us personally. We also remember the families and friends of those who have recently died, in particular Mike Carter, and those whose anniversary of death falls at this time. As we remember Jesus' resurrection, may they be assured assured that their loved ones are safe with you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. As our young people return to school and college after the Easter break, we ask your blessing, especially on those who are preparing for exams this term. Calm their anxieties and help them to maintain a good balance between study and relaxation. Be with them as they make their plans for the years ahead so that they may uh, so that they may make lives that you would wish for them, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We bring before you, Father, all those people sleeping rough on our streets and in parks or doorways and others whose accommodation is inadequate or unhealthy. Bless the work of charities such as Crisis, Shelter, and Emmaus, trying their best to help so that we may soon see an end to homelessness and everybody may have a place where they can feel secure and the dignity of paid employment. We pray also for all those throughout the world whose only home is a tent or a refugee camp because war or natural disaster has driven them from their homes. Bring a swift end to the troubles that they had to flee 
so they may return and rebuild their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Together with all Christian people, we bring these prayers to you, trusting that you will grant our petitions as is best for us. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. The reason Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace, a handshake, a greeting, a hug. Peace with you, brother. Oh, peace be with you, Colin. Peace with you. <laughs> Peace with you, brother. Good to see Joseph. Peace with you, brother. Peace with you. Oh, good to see you. Well, bless you, Nikki. Peace with you, Karen. Oh, Peace with you, darling. You have a lovely sandwich. <laughs> As he stood among the disciples, let's invite Jesus to come and stand with us in the words of Graham Kendrick's Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your loving care, you spread before us the table of life and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of our Savior and our Shepherd, your Son, 
Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed be God forever. Would you please be seated? So we declare that the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. But for by the breath of your mouth, you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again, you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy, and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the songs of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and singing. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet, in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal of the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us, dying for his own he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. For on the night that he gave himself up, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup of wine and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross, we celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, that these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
transform us into the likeness of Christ and make us perfect in as I know thing to you. Look with favor on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with all your saints at the table in your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And as in one voice we pray, our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So we break this bread to share in the body of Christ for though we are many we are one body because we all share in one body invite those assisting me with communion to come and join us at the front. As they do so, we lift our hearts to heaven to receive the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to keep us all in eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. Hallelujah. The body and the blood of Christ, broken and shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of Christ to keep you in eternal life. Amen. Receive the body and the blood of Christ, broken and shed for you. This is the body and the blood of Christ to keep you in eternal life. Amen. Receive the body and the blood of Christ broken and shed for you. Amen. This is the body and the blood of Christ to keep you in eternal life. Amen.
living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And together we pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we're still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life, we who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our thanksgiving hymn is Ye Choirs of New Jerusalem. For those with hymn books, it's 221, verses 1, 4, 5, and 6. Would you please stand? So don't look aside, look at Jesus, see him, touch, eat with him, and be empowered by his resurrection and the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We are raised to new life with Christ. Go in his peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 